and welcome to the episode 185 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, you'll hear about the completion of the Beatles' fourth single, a catastrophe in the making, and the continued work on Obladi Oblada and Golden Slumbers. Let's start the show with a 1962 evening performance at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. It was the 4th of July, and the Beatles still featured Pete Best on drums. One year later, in 1963, producer George Martin was at the helm of a session at the EMI Studios in Abbey Road, London. Between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m., he and his team completed the mono mixes of She Loves You and I'll Get You for the Beatles' fourth single release. It is not known whether the Beatles attended the session themselves, there is no record of their presence in the studio, but the soon-to-be fabs were in London. In the evening, in fact, they attended the second performance of the Rolling Stones at the Scene Club in Soho, after watching them live for the first time in April. Check out episode 104 of What A Fab Day for more info on that. Sharing the stage with the Stones, there was Peter Asher, brother of Paul's girlfriend Jane, and later part of the duo Peter and Gordon. On this date in 1965, the Beatles left Barcelona, Spain, after the end of their European tour on the previous evening. About a thousand fans were at London Airport, later renamed Heathrow, when they landed at 12 noon. All fine and dandy, but are you fine enough of this content to head to www.simonmas.com support and give me some help to keep on going? The choice is a simple one. A donation, a share, a comment, if nothing else, via the form you find on my website, and I will know that you're caring. Silent non-action and I might stop producing high-quality music-related content for you to enjoy. Can you run this risk? Come on then, let's make it happen. Let's fill the web with great content you love. Thank you. 1966, Manila, Philippines. At 4 a.m., the Beatles had finally managed to drag themselves into their hotel room after being held more or less captive of a local VIP on his boat. We've covered that in yesterday's episode, remember? Well, today they were still fast asleep when two officers arrived, later in the morning, to take them to the First Lady Imelda Marcos' party at the Malacanang Palace. In his book John, Paul, George, Ringo and Me, Nam's Tony Barrow recalls the simple speak they gave to the band's entourage. This is not a request. We have our orders. The children who wish to meet the Beatles will assemble at 11. Beatles manager Brian Epstein was then summoned, pronto. As we saw yesterday, either nobody had cared to alert the management of the band of the request, or the Beatles had refused to attend. Whatever. Epstein left his breakfast table and personally informed the officers of the group's refusal to attend. He knew of no invitation, and he absolutely refused to wake up the boys until it was time to prepare for the afternoon's concert. For once, he would not capitulate to the establishment requests. The officers left without a word. Well done, Brian! Or maybe… Hardly half an hour had passed, and the British ambassador office was on the line. Refusing an invitation from the First Lady. A dangerous game to play with the people who were in courteous charge of any help and protection, quote-unquote, the Beatles could get while on the island. But the dice was cast, and Epstein refused once again to wake up the band, who still had no idea of what was going on. It was a momentous decision that would have had serious consequences in the very near future. The Beatles performed twice today at the Rizal Memorial Football Stadium in Manila. The afternoon show was attended by 30,000 fans, while the evening one by 50,000. While they were playing their music, 
Roused by TV reports, public opinion was quickly turning against them though, with adoration melting into open hostility. By the end of their second performance, the police escort was withdrawn and the band's limousine was surrounded. Not by the usual Beatlemaniacs this time, but by people banging at their windows with much more aggressive attitudes. In the end, they managed to return to their hotel, scared but unhurt. One year later, in 1967, we have a nice change of scenery. George and Patty Harrison travelled to the village of Appleton Thorn, near Warrington, in the north of England, to visit George's parents. In 1968, between 7 pm and 2.15 am, the Beatles kept working on Obladi Oblada, overdubbing Paul's lead vocal and John's and George's backing harmonies onto Take 4. Take 4 was then reduced into a new Take 5, with Paul adding a new lead vocal part to it, double tracking his previous lines. Let's close the episode with two events happened on the 4th of July 1969. In the morning, John Lennon's first non-Beatles single came out in UK. It was Give Peace a Chance, recorded on the 1st of June in Montreal, as detailed in episode 152 of this very podcast. The single, backed by Remember Love, was issued on Apple and attributed to the Plastic Ono Band, a concept band with changing personnel which John would use to release his non-Beatles music. Technically, the song was a Lennon-McCartney number, but Paul had no part in its composition. As you will recall, it was a sing-along piece recorded on the last day of John and Yoko's second bed in for peace in Montreal, featuring whoever was in the room. It was another step in the Beatles' long breakup. Talking about the Beatles, they had a recording session at the EMI Studios today. The Beatles, that is, minus John Lennon, who was still at the Sutherland Hospital in Scotland, recovering from the car crash we described in episode 182. Truth to be told, most of this 2.45 to 5.30 pm session was spent listening to the live broadcast of BBC Radio 2 Wimbledon Ladies Tennis Championship Finals. Despite the distraction, George Harrison, Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr managed to add an electric guitar and some drum overdubs on Golden Slumbers Carry That Weight. And with this, I guess we can close this episode. Tune in tomorrow to learn about a big songwriting controversy. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.